The universe of Land of the Lost, a cherished and iconic television series, unfolds not only as a thrilling escapade through an alternate world teeming with dinosaurs and enigmatic creatures, but also as a complex tapestry interwoven with myriad secrets and subtle nuances. Join us as we take you through some big secrets you missed in Land of the Lost. Celebrated Writers and Creative Minds Land of the Lost was not just a children's show in its conceptualization and execution, but it was a creative playground for some of the most celebrated writers in the sci-fi genre. It attracted the likes of Larry Niven, Ben Bova, and Theodore Sturgeon, who contributed to crafting the adventurous and otherworldly tales defining the show. The involvement of these renowned sci-fi writers brought depth and complexity to this series, intertwining imaginative storytelling with scientific concepts and speculative fiction. Budget Constraints and Creative Solutions Despite the ambitious narrative involving time portals, dinosaurs, and alien landscapes, Land of the Lost was famously constrained by a notably tight budget. This limitation significantly impacted various aspects of the show, from the special effects utilized to bring the prehistoric creatures to life, to the sets that formed the backdrop of the Marshall family's adventures. The creators had to employ a variety of innovative and cost-effective solutions to navigate these financial limitations. For instance, the utilization of stop-motion animation to animate the dinosaurs, while time-consuming and labor-intensive, was a more budget-friendly alternative to other available special effects options of the time. This method, while necessitating meticulous attention to detail and patience, allowed the creators to bring dynamic, engaging creatures to the screen, contributing to the show's charm and adventurous spirits. There were also only three Sleestacks costumes even made due to money constraints, so various actors had to rotate inside those three the whole time. NBA Legend Bill Lambeer, renowned for his career with the Detroit Pistons in the NBA, has an unexpected connection to the world of 1970s TV sci-fi. Before he became widely recognized for his skill on the basketball court and his physical, aggressive style of play, Lambeer took on a very different role portraying a stack on Land of the Lost. Lambeer, standing at 6 feet 11 inches, was well suited to portray the towering, ominous stacks. His height and physicality allowed him to bring an intimidating and eerie presence to the creatures, contributing to their status as one of the show's most iconic and unsettling elements. Musical Talents and Memorable Melodies the theme song of Land of the Lost is one of the show's most memorable elements, instantly recognizable to fans and evoking a sense of nostalgia. Behind this catchy tune was Linda Laurie, the composer responsible for crafting the melody that accompanied the Marshalls on their adventures. But Linda's talents weren't limited to composing. She also lent her voice to other entertainment avenues, most notably as the character of Marie in Disney's The Aristocats. The theme song sets the tone for the show, providing a musical introduction to the fantastical world the Marshalls found themselves in. Sleestack Limitations and Character Challenges the Sleestacks, with their reptilian appearance and eerie hisses, are among the most iconic characters. However, bringing the creatures to life on screen was no easy feat. The costumes, while visually striking, were incredibly limiting for the actors inside them. Visibility was severely restricted and mobility was hampered. Actors had to navigate the set with minimal vision, relying on guidance and their familiarity with the surroundings. The physical demands of portraying a slee stack were significant, but the actors' dedication ensured that these creatures became an integral and memorable part of the show's lore. Recycled Roars – Sound Effects from Classic Films the sound effects used for the dinosaurs, particularly their roars, were not originally created for Land of the Lost. Instead, the show utilized recycled sound effects from classic movies, such as The Creature from the Black Lagoon, to provide the vocalizations for their prehistoric creatures. This was common practice at the time, particularly for productions with limited budgets, as creating new, original sound effects for creatures could be costly. Utilizing existing sound effects from classic films allowed the show to present convincing and familiar sounds that audiences could associate with monstrous creatures, enhancing the believability of the dinosaurs. Chaka's Age – A Surprising Reality 
Philip Paley, who portrayed the Pakuni boy Chaka, was not the child that many viewers believed him to be. During the filming of Land of the Lost, Paley was actually 17 years old, despite convincingly portraying a much younger character. His small stature and youthful appearance allowed him to take on the role of the young and often mischievous Chaka, providing a character that younger viewers could relate to and sympathize with. Chaka became a beloved character on the show, providing moments of levity, danger, and camaraderie, and Paley's portrayal was central to the character's charm and appeal. His ability to convincingly portray a young, wild, and curious character contributed to the dynamic of the stranded group. Library Scenes – An Unconventional Set The Land of the Lost creators had to be particularly resourceful when it came to managing the show's tight budget, and this was notably evident in their use of locations for shooting various scenes. The interior scenes of the pylons, which were crucial settings within the show, were actually filmed in a public library in Los Angeles. The library, with its unique architectural features, provided a sufficiently alien and unfamiliar backdrop that could convincingly transport viewers to another world. Sid and Marty Croft, Pioneering Creators The creators of Land of the Lost, Sid and Marty Croft, were no strangers to the world of imaginative and fantastical entertainment. They were well-known puppeteers and producers who created numerous popular children's programs, each imbued with a distinctive blend of creativity, fantasy, and heart. Their productions, including H.R. Puff and Stuff and Sigmund and the Sea Monsters, were celebrated for their imaginative worlds, colorful characters, and the ability to enchant both children and adults alike. Land of the Lost was a departure from their typical puppet-centric productions, but it retained the imaginative spirit and adventurous heart that defined their body of work. When approached by the network with a simple and straightforward request for, quote, something with dinosaurs, they were presented an opportunity to delve into a prehistoric world, blending their signature creativity with the timeless appeal of those ancient creatures. The result was Land of the Lost, a show that went on to become one of the most iconic and beloved series of the 70s. Sleestack Actors, Student Performers the actors who brought the Slee Stacks to life were often not professional actors, but students recruited from local universities. Given the physical demands and limitations of the Slee Stack costumes, the role required individuals who could navigate these challenges effectively. The students, often from athletic programs, were able to manage the physicality of the roles, moving in ways that were both eerie and convincingly non-human. Despite the challenges posed by the costumes, including limited visibility and mobility, the performers successfully brought the Slee Stacks to life, creating characters that were both menacing and curiously empathetic, and who would become iconic within the series and beloved by fans. Now it's time to hear from you. Which of these facts was most surprising to hear about? Let us know in the comments section below.